Hello and welcome to the overview of cellular respiration and its electron carriers. Please change the quality of your video to 240p so we don't overwhelm the bandwidth of the high school. All right, let's get started. As a quick review, let's consider some of the content that was presented in yesterday's lesson. So what is the overall purpose of cellular respiration? The purpose of cellular respiration is to convert the energy stored in glucose into a more usable form, which is ATP. And where does the process occur? Well, it actually occurs in two different locations. The process begins in the cytoplasm with glycolysis, then continues in the mitochondria if oxygen is available. But if it's not, it continues and stays in the cytoplasm to do anaerobic respiration. And what kind of organisms conduct cellular respiration? Remember that all living things respire in one way or another. Plants respire. Animals also respire because all living things need ATP. The ATP is used for the production of macromolecules and to run and drive the reactions, including things like active transport. Mrs. Iverson should have given you a packet to fill out as you watch this video. So make sure you pause appropriately and fill in the information that is required on the video as well as on the note sheet. So let's begin at the beginning. And the beginning of cellular respiration is glycolysis. This box illustrates kind of the big picture of glycolysis. It shows you where glycolysis occurs. That's the cytoplasm. It shows you that it begins with a molecule of glucose, which undergoes the process of glycolysis and produces these three main products, ATP, pyruvic acid or pyruvate, and also NADH. So if you look at your worksheet and find box number one at the top, you can fill in the same information from the video onto your worksheet. So now that glycolysis is complete, it's time to ask the critical question, is oxygen available? If the answer is yes, then these products will continue on to the aerobic pathway. But the answer, if the answer is no, then they'll continue on the anaerobic pathway or fermentation pathway. Let's assume the answer is no. No oxygen is available. Or at least not enough oxygen is available. When oxygen is scarce, pyruvate and NADH stay in the cytoplasm and they undergo anaerobic respiration, which is also called fermentation. Now, depending on what kind of organism you are, you may undergo alcohol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. Our bodies do lactic acid fer fermentation. Other microorganisms produce alcohol. But it doesn't really matter because neither pathway produces any ATP. So what's the benefit? Why bother going through fermentation? The benefit is that anaerobic respiration or fermentation provides NAD positive for glycolysis. Glycolysis cannot continue making ATP indefinitely unless it has a steady supply of NAD positive, and fermentation can provide that supply. At this point, fill out box number two on your worksheet. So what if the answer is yes, oxygen is available? So when oxygen is plentiful, then pyruvate and NADH head to the mitochondria to undergo aerobic respiration. And this includes three steps, converting pyruvate, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, or the ETC. Now remember the ATP producing glycolysis, that doesn't travel to the mitochondria. It's already good to go. The cell can use it wherever it needs that extra usable energy. And when aerobic respiration in the mitochondria is complete, pyruvate and NADH from glycolysis will be used to make a whole bunch of ATP in the mitochondria. At this point, fill out box number three on the front of your worksheet. Now, when you were learning about photosynthesis, we talked about the electron carrier NADP positive. Respiration is not photosynthesis, so it actually uses different electron carriers. And the first electron carrier that it uses is NAD positive. There's no P in this one. But because it's still an electron carrier, it has the capacity to carry two high energy electrons. The first electron, will take the positive NAD and make it neutral. The second electron 
we'll change the neutral NAD to NAD negative. Now that NAD is negative, it's very attracted to the positive hydrogen ions. The positively charged hydrogen will join with NAD negative to form a high power, full energy filled electron carrier called NADH. And remember, NADH is not NADPH. It does the same job, though. And that job is to carry electrons and hydrogen. Now remember that the availability of oxygen determines where this NADH will locate itself. Will it be in the mitochondria to do aerobic respiration, or will it end up in the cytoplasm to continue on fermentation? So if oxygen is available, then NADH will head to the mitochondria to perform aerobic respiration, but if not, it'll stay in the cytoplasm for fermentation. A second and different electron carrier found in cellular respiration is FAD. And FAD is neutral. It does not have a positive charge on it originally. But it's an electron carrier, so it can also carry two high-energy electrons. Because it's carrying two electrons and it begins neutral, when these two electrons join with it, FAD will be doubly negative charged. And this double negative charge means that FAD can actually carry two hydrogen ions. When the two positively charged ions join with FAD negative, that'll become that full electron carrier called FADH2. And FADH2 is actually produced during aerobic respiration. So it doesn't have the option of going to anaerobic respiration. FADH2 will travel from part of the mitochondria into the electron transport chain where it'll help produce a lot of ATP. Since it's already in the mitochondria, FADH2 will stay there to produce that extra ATP. So at this point, it's time to complete page two of your worksheet. Remember to focus on independent learning of this material, not just filling out the worksheet. Try to get it into your brain and absorb it. When you're done with page two, Page three asks you to outline the three boxes on the infographic on page one in a different color. Then, on page three of the same packet, it asks you to explain each of those boxes in words. When you've done complete sentences and a good explanation of each of the boxes, outline them the same color you use on the front page for each of the boxes. That's it for today.